So this is joint work with Isaac Kim, Michael Levin, David Lin, and Bowen Shi. And David's here in the audience if you want to chat later. So I'll be telling you about topological entanglement entropy. And I'll go slowly starting in a minute. But let me first just summarize the, the story of these ideas. So if you have a 2D local Hamiltonian, and you look at the ground state, and you look at the entanglement entropy of a spatial region, there's a contribution to that entanglement entropy that is called the topological entanglement entropy. I'll keep calling that the TEE. And it has this really interesting connection to anions and topological phases. So in particular, gamma, the TEE, is supposed to be equal to log D, where D is the total quantum dimension of the anions in your model. It's sort of like counting the number of anion species. And it's sort of an intriguing formula because gamma is just this ground state topological entanglement entropy. But this log D is this universal data about the anions, and it actually has to do with the excitations of the model and the topological order. And this formula was developed about 20 years ago, um, partly by Michael Levin, who's one of the co-authors on this paper. And shortly after, it was realized by Sergei Bravi that the formula doesn't quite hold all the time. So in lots of natural examples, it's true. But in other examples that don't seem particularly pathological, the formula is very wrong in a sense. And the contribution of this work is to sort of partially restore the formula by realizing it as an inequality. So it turns out that even though the TEE gamma can be different for different states in the same phase, you do have this universal lower bound on the TEE, which is this quantity log D that only depends on what phase the state is in. And it turns out you can also sort of massage this lower bound into a circuit invariant definition of TEE, if you like. I'll give a proof in the special case of the toric code phase, and then I'll at least give a statement for the general case for general 2D gapped phases. So just to set up our arena again, I'm looking at 2D local Hamiltonian models on the lattice and that, that are gapped. And as an example, you might have in mind the icing model or the Tor code Hamiltonian. And the object of study is the entanglement entropy of, uh, of a region. And how should this quantity behave? Well, if you have a product state, of course, the entanglement entropy is zero. But more generally, the toy model to have in mind, maybe, is if each of the qubits is in a bell pair with one of its neighbors. Then in that case, if you draw this region and ask the entanglement entropy, the entanglement is proportional to the number of bell pairs that the boundary cuts. So you might generically expect that the entanglement entropy is proportional to the boundary length. And that's basically true. That's called the area law. But there's also this constant piece, the topological entanglement entropy. And already you can see that this piece has something to do with sort of global or topological entanglement because it's not due to local contributions on the boundary. It's this other extra piece that you get sometimes. And the first question you should ask is, how do you actually canonically define that TEE gamma? Because it might be sort of unclear how to, how to draw the dichotomy between the first two terms in this formula. So the insight of Levin and Wen and of Kataev and Preskill was to use a linear combination of entropies of different regions. So in this we'll be focusing on, a, on an annulus like this. So you have these three regions, A, B, C. Note that B has two different parts. And we'll look at the conditional mutual information of A, B, and C. So that's the formula at the bottom. And it turns out that if you assumed that each region has this area law with a constant term, and then you added up these four entropies, you would be left with just the constant term. So that's why we're going to end up defining gamma as this conditional mutual information. And just to track through an example, if you look at this red piece of the boundary, it contributes to both of the red terms in the formula, but with different signs. So that local piece of the boundary doesn't contribute to this overall conditional mutual information. And that's why you're left just with the gamma term. And the idea when they developed this formula was that gamma should be independent of how you deform your regions. So it's a topological invariant in that sense. But also they thought it should be independent of which state you look at in the topological phase. So that's even if you do a finite depth circuit to the, your state, they wanted this gamma to be invariant. 
Now, we've heard a lot about topological phases already today, but I'll still just give a brief and formal definition. So there's the definition based on Hamiltonians, which is that if you have two gapped Hamiltonians, then they're in the same topological phase if you can continuously deform one Hamiltonian to the other without closing the gap. So that's a sort of standard physics definition of a state of a phase of matter where you're looking at a zero temperature phase of matter. The definition that we'll be focusing on instead is, instead is based on states, not Hamiltonians. So instead you look at the respective ground states and you say, these two ground states are in the same topological phase if they can be connected by constant depth circuits where the system is infinite, but you're looking at a constant depth circuit. And some fine print is that we're not worrying about quasi-local circuits in this work, so that would be an area for follow-up work. So just as an example, a product state is in the trivial phase. That's just what we mean by trivial. Uh, also, any state that you can reach with a finite depth circuit from a product state would also be in the trivial phase. But the toric code ground state, as we heard earlier today, is not in the trivial phase. So you could not prepare it with a finite depth circuit. Uh, just to be clear, you can prepare it using measurements, but we're not considering measurements in this work. So you cannot prepare it with a finite depth circuit. Okay, and you've heard enough about enions, but what you need to hear for this talk is just that you can create them with these string operators that create a pair of enion type A and A bar. And that for each anion, you can associate some number that's called the quantum dimension. It's sort of like the dimension of the Hilbert space associated to the excitation, loosely speaking. And then finally, this quantity D is the total quantum dimension, which is sort of like a count of the number of types of anions. And you won't, I'll, I'll give you a proof of our result in a simple case, and you won't really need to know much about this anion theory. And just as an example, the trivial phase has total quantum dimension one. But the toric code phase would have a total quantum dimension of two, because that's like square root of four, and there are four different anions. Okay, so back to this formula. Now we know what the total quantum dimension is, and the idea is that it's always supposed to be equal to gamma, the TEE. -E. And again, we're asking, when is this formula actually true? So the first counterexample to this formula, I guess... I was just told, came about a few months even after the original papers were published. And it's really just a cluster state. So you look at a 2D product state, and then you build a cluster state, that's what I show in purple, around the boundary of a region. And the cluster state is a trivial state. You can build it with a depth two circuit. And if you calculate the TEE, you get something non-zero. So even though you're in the trivial phase, if you calculate the TEE of this simple trivial stabilizer state, you get something non-zero. And it's basically because there's some long-range conditional mutual information in the state, even though it's a trivial state. Um, and then the history is, Zhou and Ha analyzed this example, and they sort of generalized it and posited that, in general, the spurious TEE is related to SPTs. By the way, I should say, the, what does spurious mean? That means the extra TEE that you didn't expect. It's like the violation of the formula that we thought. So they sort of speculated, well, they, they showed that for many SBT examples, you can see that there's a spurious contribution. And they sort of speculated maybe it's always due to some SBT. Then Williamson, Dua, and Chang expanded on this SBT idea and looked at subsystem protected, uh, subsystem symmetry protected phases. And in particular, they came up with a translation invariant state where you could look at arbitrarily large regions and also get this spurious term. Because before you might have thought that you could, it only happened for this special weird region where you drew this cluster state, but they sort of drew cluster states everywhere and realized that you could have this translation invariant example. And then Cato and Brandau, they looked at, they offered a proof that for stabilizer states, the spurious TEE was always due to SBTs. But then they have some evidence that maybe it's not always due to an SPT. And I think it's still an open question. It's very intriguing. We're not going to answer that. So it's an open question why you get this spurious TEE. We're just going to lower bound it. So again, that's the spurious TEE. And I'll also mention there's some other work that tries to that makes successfully circuit invariant definitions that are like TEE. So Ha and Cato and Najkins have work like that. What we're focused on here is trying to get a circuit invariant definition of TEE that uses spatial entanglement entropies. So this is a sort of complementary goal.
Okay, and now the main results I can state. So roughly, we give this lower bound again. And whereas the left-hand side depends on the state in the phase, the right-hand side only depends on the Enion data of the phase. And the upshot is that you can think of the TE as a sort of partial diagnostic. So if you were in the lab and you had a state and you were trying to figure out what phase it's in and you found that gamma was 0.5, well, you would know that your state can't be in the toric code phase, but it could be a trivial state because it could have a positive spurious TE, but it couldn't be in the toric code phase because then it would need to have a negative spurious TE. Similarly, if you found gamma was 1.5, then you could say, okay, it could be in the toric code phase, but it couldn't be in the Z4 phase. So in this way, it's a sort of partial diagnostic of what phase your state could be in. And you can massage this lower bound I just gave into a circuit invariant definition of TE in the following way. Um, so we're going to look at increasingly large regions so we're going to look at an annulus of length scale r and take r to infinity. And then we're going to minimize over all constant over all circuits whose depth is increasing but is less than the scale r. And then we're going to look at the TEE of this state with a circuit applied. And if you think about it on your own for a minute, you'll see that the lower bound I gave on the last slide will pretty straightforwardly imply that this limit exists and it's equal to log d. So this is just a sort of reframing of our result. Whether you like this version is sort of depending on your own aesthetic, but it will give you this formula for a circuit invariant TEE in a sense. Okay, now let me make a precise statement of what we prove in the case of the toric code phase, and then I'll give an argument for how that proof goes. And I think you'll actually be able to follow the details. So what you'd like to say is roughly that for any state in the same phase as the toric code, the TEE is bigger than one. So the statement we'll end up making is that if you look at the toric code ground state on a sphere, on a plane, then for any constant depth circuit, if you look at an annulus that's somewhat larger than that circuit depth, the TEE will need to be larger than one. So if you translate that, it's roughly saying any state in the same phase, because it's related by a constant depth circuit, will have a larger TEE than one. One caveat is that really you would like to look at uh, quasi-local circuits, but again, that's not something that we do in this work. Okay, so how do you show this? Well, the first step is to, instead of considering a circuit that covers the whole state, the whole plane, will show that it's sufficient to only consider a circuit that covers part of the annulus. So first I'll explain why that's the case, and then I'll show that the TEE can only increase under this circuit. So in step one, we have this circuit I call U1 that's covering the whole toric code ground state. And now we want to ask about the TEE in this state. Well, it's the same conditional mutual information, the same TEE, if I were to remove a bunch of the gates in the interior of A. And that's just because those will only affect the reduced density matrix of A by a unitary, so it won't change the entropy in the formula for the conditional mutual information. So that's a simple equality. By the way, the gates need to be far enough into the interior of A larger than the light cone of the circuit. OK, the next step is we're going to shrink the region A and by the monotonicity of conditional mutual information, which is also just strong subadditivity, we're going to see that this will give a lower bound on the CMI if we shrink the region A. Okay, and the final simple step here is we're just going to remove some other gates in the circuit that are not actually affecting the reduced density matrix. So in the end, we saw that this CMI we wanted to lower bound is lower bounded by this right-hand term where we have a shrunken region A and we have a circuit that doesn't actually cover the whole annulus. So that's why it's, if we want to give a lower bound, it's sufficient to only consider this setup where the circuit does not cover the whole annulus. That's sort of step one of this simple case proof. Okay, so if that's our setup, how do we then show that the TEE needs to be lower bounded by one in this toric code case? Well, 
we're going to introduce this state lambda, which is a uniform mixture over the four Enion types of the toric code. And the key to note about these, so the four Enion type sectors I'm calling rho sub A. And some key facts about them are that they are locally indistinguishable on the annulus from the ground state, or from each other. So already this first equation will follow, where, oh, actually, this first equation is just, uh, right, this first equation follows from the local indistinguishability I just mentioned. And then in the next step, you just lower bound the CMI, the conditional mutual information, by zero. That's just strong subadditivity. Okay, and now we're looking at this entropy difference between lambda, which is this uniform mixture, and between the state with the circuit on it. So we want to lower bound this. Just two more lines here. So you all probably know the formula for the entropy of a bunch of, of, an orth, of a mixture of orthogonal states. You get one term in the entropy, which is just like this entropy of mixing, and that's this uh, entropy function of one fourth. And then these other two terms are actually going to cancel out. And the reason that they cancel out is that all of these sectors have the same entropy on the annulus. And that is special to the toric code here. It's because these toric code string operators actually factorize. They're like poly strings. So they factorize between the inside of the annulus and the outside of the annulus. So that means that the, the entropies of all these sectors are the same. So those last two terms cancel out, and we just get two at the end. And that's exactly what we wanted. OK, so that was the proof for the toric code case. I'm the, my last slide here, I'm just going to put up this statement for the general case. So again, what we want to say is that any two states in the same gapped phase have gamma lower bounded by log d, where d is the total quantum dimension of the phase. To sort of formalize this in a way that we can prove, we introduce this notion of a reference state. So this is a state where the TEE does not depend on the choice of annulus, on the choice of regions and which also has zero correlation length. Now, as far as anyone knows, every single gapped phase with gapped boundary has one of these reference states in the phase somewhere, given by, for instance, a string net state. So that means that any state in the phase is related by a constant depth circuit to one of these reference states. OK, with that in mind, here's the result. We show that you take any reference state, so any state where the TE doesn't depend on your annulus, you apply any constant depth circuit, and that can only increase the TEE. Now, if you further know that the reference state has a TEE given by log D, which has basically been proven by um, Isaac Kim and Bowen Shi, who are co-authors, and also Kotaro Kato here, and you string that result together, and what you get finally is that the TEE of any state in the phase is lower bounded by this log D. Great. So now I'll just finish with some open questions. Like I mentioned before, it still is a total mystery, I think, when and why spurious TEE occurs. So it can, it can only be positive we showed, and you can sort of massage it into this invariant definition, but it's still unclear when it shows up. Uh, maybe it only shows up with SPTs. Maybe there's this counterexample, although it's sort of based on numerical evidence that might be inconclusive, so we don't know. Also, you can define the TEE using this other partition as well, the kataev preskill partition. I think all of us who wrote this paper together separately tried to apply the same method to this partition, and all of us thought that it was doable, but that we couldn't do it. So maybe one of you can do that. You might also wonder about higher dimensions. Uh, Quasi-local circuits, I mentioned before, you would want to consider quasi-local circuits to truly consider general states in a phase. There's some sort of intriguing relationship to RG, you might think, because this sort of has the feeling of an RG monotone that is minimized at these fixed-point states. I don't know what else to say there. And finally, you might wonder if this can actually be turned into a practical diagnostic of topological phases in experiments. To achieve that, you would need to find some way of efficiently measuring the entropy of these gapped ground states. Now, entropy is hard to measure in general, but maybe for these states that appear as 2D gapped ground states, there is some way of measuring it efficiently. <laughs>
Okay, thanks a lot. Okay, so we have time for a few questions. So if you calculate the topological entangle entropy for the GHZ state, you get minus one. You get something negative. Mm -hmm. So that I don't see how this is compatible with your results that you have a lower one because you can always take a tensor product of your system with a GHZ state and therefore it will kind of lower it. Yeah, well, the GHZ state has long range correlation, so we don't like it. Um, to be clear where it comes into the assumptions, I say that a reference, we're considering states that are constant depth circuit away from sort of like a nice state, one of these reference states. We assume that these reference states have zero correlation length. So we're not considering GHZ states. You don't like that. Well, yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah. I mean, it, it's a proof that it cannot be lower. Than, I mean, hmm? Yeah, I don't understand the exact assumptions. Sure, sure. well, sure. I'll, I'll try to say it one more time. So we prove that for all states, related by a constant depth circuit to a so-called reference state, this formula holds. Now, a reference state is a state that has zero correlation length, so that rules out GHC, and which uh, has TEE independent of regions. So that's where the GHZ is ruled out. Now, you might wonder if our result is robust under stacking with arbitrary states, and of course it's not, because if you stack it with a GHZ state, then you go negative. More questions? Sorry if you said this, uh, can you extend this to chiral central charge stuff? Right, so. Are you doing it in your head right now? No, no, I was just thinking. <laughs> so we, if, you, if you check out our paper, we do have a paragraph in the discussion where we sketch an argument for how you can pair a, a state with its time reversal and then run our argument and that therefore it could apply to states that have a chiral central charge. It's not quite rigorous because to do that carefully, you would also need to consider quasi-local circuits at the same time, which we are unable to do. But it's sort of sketched how you might go in that direction. Thank you. I think we have time for one or two more questions. I thought you wanted to show the motivation was gamma equal log t, if I understand correctly. You show lower band, so is there some way to, is there some known upper band for this quantity? Or is there some way that you're considering? Yeah, so, so there is, the equality is just, there's no hope of saving it. I mean, there's no, there's no upper bound. You can add as much spurious entanglement as you want by stacking on cluster states, if you like. Um, so there really is just this lower bound. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I mean, with some under appropriate assumption, you can you can show that, right? No. With with, with a, say again, sorry. With some uh, appropriate restriction on your Hamiltonian or E under some assumption uh, by adding some assumption. Right. I mean. Right. There are some assumptions that you can add to get to make sure the spurious term doesn't yes. appear. Um, there's not yet a really sort of natural set of assumptions to make the spurious term go away because we don't know exactly when it shows up. It's still sort of a mystery. Thank you, thank you for clarification. I think we have time for one more question, if there is one. If not, then let's thank the speaker again.